Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mr. Pratt here, and this is Gravel. So as you know, I'm always bringing you accessible, modifiable, and engaging content for in the gym, at home, and in the classroom. Gravit is no exception. It's one of my back pocket games. It's one that requires minimal equipment, it's quick setup, and it's great for warm-ups at any age. Gravit's also very easily modifiable for different group sizes and fitness or fundamental movement skill type activities. It can be made to be competitive, cooperative, or to assess teamwork and cooperation amongst the group. So if you've seen my previous video called Lions and Tigers, you're gonna love grabbing. So your typical setup, you're gonna have a spot marker, you're gonna have a bean bag or some other kind of object students can grab on top of that spot marker. And then your students are gonna move an equal distance away from the item that they're gonna be grabbing. Okay, the spot marker isn't entirely necessary, but I find it helpful for students to put the object back. So I'm gonna take about a step or two away, big step. I'm about a meter away right now. This would be the closest I would ever have students be. The orange pylon you see in front of me is marking what would be my opponent in this case. All right, so music is essential to grab it. You're gonna need some great tunes. Uh, I often ask students for requests of music they like. It just keeps them more active, more engaged. Just like lots of adults like to listen to music while they're being active, so do a lot of students. So the more you can get them involved in the decisions and the music you play and that kind of stuff, the more engaged, the more positive emotions are gonna be associated with being active. And these little things over uh, the course of a couple years are the big habit formers that are gonna make students wanna be active into later childhood, youth, and hopefully adulthood. So it seems small, but it's something that I like to try and do as much as I can. So once you've picked your sweet tunes, um, you're gonna turn on the music. As soon as the music is on, my partner and I will have either decided who's gonna be the leader, you can do this follow the leader style, or I will have written somewhere in the gym or told students a predetermined set of exercises. So for example, you can say like you're gonna do 10 jumping jacks, then 10 sit-ups, then 10 push-ups, then 10 burpees, and then you repeat, okay? So both students in that case would start with 10 jumping jacks, and when they finish the jumping jacks, they would move on to sit-ups, okay? And the pattern would continue. Now they don't have to finish at the exact same time. Again, this is important. Students should be working on these skills at their own speed. It's not a race yet, but the movement part is not a race, okay? So I could be finishing my jumping jacks and my opponent or my partner could be working on sit-ups a little bit before me. That's okay, it actually makes the game a little bit more fun. Now, if you're doing it follow the leader style, you of course would be copying each other directly. So if I was the leader and I'm doing jumping jacks, my partner does jumping jacks. If I switch to sit-ups, my partner switches to sit-ups. If I start busting a move on the spot, you know, doing the flops, I can't really do it. Um, my partner would then be doing that as well. So you can actually incorporate dance into this game as well. You can keep the music on for as long as you want. I would say don't put it on any longer than you know, maybe a minute at a time with maybe older students, younger students, I'd keep it even less than that, probably 30 seconds at most. Sometimes I like to only put it on for two or three seconds to keep students guessing. When the music stops, we have to stop what we're doing, try and be the first to grab the bean bag. If I get the bean bag, I just do a little celebration, you know, making sure I'm working on that sportsmanship piece, and I put the bean bag back, and we get ready for the next round. So grab it's as simple as that. In this case, there was only two of us. Grab it can be modified to be played with three people, four people, or in theory, it could be modified to be played with even more. But I've only ever done gone as high as four people in a group. Uh, any more than that, there's maybe too many people going for the same bean bag. So if we had four people, another person could be up here, another person could be over here, and again, we could be doing a set set of exercises, or a set list of exercises, or we could be doing a follow the leader style. So this is obviously a great game for fitness and for warm up. You can get that heart rate up. You can be working on different skills, targeting different skills. Okay, it's also a great one for working, especially with younger kids, 
on that sportsmanship piece, the cooperation piece, I've actually used it as an assessment tool before. So when students are successful in grabbing the beanbag or not, with younger students, you can see how they react to winning and losing and uh, have conversations about sportsmanship and having a positive attitude and all that kind of stuff. And I've also uh, used it as a teamwork cooperation communication assessment before because when you have a group, if you use four people or three people, if you do a follow the leader style, you're giving each person a chance to be a leader. You'll see if they'll take that role as a leader and you're also requiring three other people to be a follower. Okay, and obviously there's times when being a follower is just as important as being a leader. So you're gonna see how the group dynamic works, if they can stay on task, if the leader's being silly, doing movements the other people can't do intentionally, those kind of things. And it's actually a really, really great activity that you can have, you know, 10, 15 different groups doing while you're just playing music on and off and assessing at the same time. Now, a few safety things to consider. Obviously, when everybody's going for that beanbag, I talk to students about keeping their head and their chest up. So when they reach in, they should be going in like this, just dropping their eyes just to grab the beanbag, right? You don't want to be going in blind like this. You're going to be smacking heads. You got to be aware of your surroundings. Normally, I would never have groups this close to a wall. Obviously, that becomes a little bit dangerous. Um, and then just controlling their speed. Um, making sure they're not going in too fast, making sure they're staying on their feet when they reach for the beanbag. That's a requirement that I have. And it's important you don't set them up too far away from the object they're grabbing because they're going to gain too much speed coming in to grab it and that's going to get much more dangerous and cause some safety concerns. So I wouldn't go much further than maybe a meter or two. And one last modification that you should be aware of, um, another beauty of gravity is it can actually be made and modified to be touchless. So you don't actually have to have the beanbag and the spot marker in the middle. You could still have a group set up or just a partnership set up the exact same way we have been. And when music comes on, they're still doing the same exercises or the same follow the leader style activity. The difference is when the music stops, they're not gonna grab it. They're gonna do some kind of predetermined balance. I've had students just, you know, have to hold one foot balance, okay? And they have to hold it for 10 seconds. And whoever does that in the group is the winner or one of the winners, or in theory, the whole group could win or be successful, okay? But they have to hold it for say 10 seconds. So the music stops, I count down from 10, see who's still balancing. They give themselves a little pat on the back, music's back on, we're playing again. And of course, you can modify the balance as you see fit. I've had them do tree poses before, right? You can give them different levels, right? This is maybe a level one, simple balance, a level two, level three, level four, level five, right? You can have different types of balance or you could incorporate some yoga into this, targeting those skills that you would like to target. All right, everybody, so that about does it for Grab It. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that subscribe button down there. Sign up for weekly notifications so you can see my weekly videos like and share away. And as always, if you use this activity, please feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know how you utilize it. I'd love to hear some of your stories as well. But for now, this is Mr. Pratt signing off from Grab.